former Secretary of State Baker, uh, Special Envoy Kerry, ambassadors, distinguished guests, colleagues, and friends. We are so delighted to have you here today. And we thank you for your support for the National Museum of American Diplomacy. I'm Susan Cleary, the Acting Director. We are the first and we are the only museum dedicated to the story of American diplomacy. Its history, its practice, its challenges, its lessons, and the fascinating people who make it happen. It, we, it is a story we believe is not well known and not well enough appreciated. So today we're here to unveil a specially commissioned bust of former Secretary of State James A. Baker III that will be part of our permanent collection. Secretary Baker, you've been a steadfast supporter of the museum, a major donor. We thank you for being here today. We thank your family and friends for being with us as well. It's very meaningful. Thank you. Now, our ambition is to complete the long planned 40,000 square foot public museum exhibition space here in our nation's capital. And it's right here around this wall that our main entry uh, to our exhibitions uh, will be our, our exhibit halls. And so every visitor to the uh, future museum and visitor to the State Department who comes through historic uh, entrance will pass this beautiful work of art that commemorates the historic contributions of Secretary Baker. Now we're delighted to have with us today the talented Swedish artist Johan Falkman, who created this work. Johan is a renowned portrait painter and sculptor. Secretary Baker has not yet seen this, the bust, um, but I have. And I have to say, Johan, it's beautiful. Congratulations, it's such an accomplishment. Uh, I'd especially like to acknowledge Secretary Baker's friends, the philanthropist Dan and Christine Olufsen. Uh, and it's through your generosity that this work was commissioned and is donated to our permanent collection. Thank you so much, Dan and Christine. And I want to thank, of course, the Diplomacy Center Foundation. Uh, we have the chairman and the president here, uh, and we have so many of the distinguished members who have been with us along the way building this museum. Thank you all for what you do for our joint project. And Mr. Secretary, we especially appreciate having you here today with us. At this moment of heightened awareness of the central importance of US diplomacy to international stability and security, it's so meaningful that you're able to take time to participate. Secretary Blinken and former Secretary Baker come from different backgrounds, different generations, and yes, different political parties. And yet, in their tenures, they've been asked to confront momentous challenges that demanded the most of American statecraft and diplomatic leadership. And so with that, I would like to invite you both up to come and to unveil the bust of Secretary Baker. Thank you. Susan, thank you so much. And to everyone here today, this is a, a special moment. Uh, Jim, welcome home. To, uh, to the leaders of the Diplomacy Center Foundation, including uh, my longtime colleague and friend, uh, Tom Pickering, Ambassador Pavaduk, thank you. Uh, it's wonderful to have you back uh, in this building as well. And it is simply an honor to have an opportunity, Mr. Secretary, to hail you uh, in this moment. To all the Baker family who are here with us today, uh, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, I know your most trusted diplomatic advisor is your wife, Susan. Grateful uh, for her. Uh, three of your eight children are with us today, uh, Coulter, Doug, and Jamie, uh, and their partners as well. We so welcome having you. I know that the Secretary's years of public service, not just here, but uh, in other institutions in Washington, demanded a lot from all of you. Uh, the sacrifices that you made were major contributions to the success that he had and that our country has, uh, has had as a result. So on behalf of the American people, 
thank you, each and every one of you, to the Bacon family. So growing up, as I read it, uh, Jim's grandfather, Captain Bacon, gave him this advice. Work hard, study hard, and stay out of politics. <laughs> For four decades, you managed to do that. But, Jim, by your telling, uh, it was the tragic loss of your first wife, Mary Stewart, and the advice of a dear friend, George H.W. Bush, uh, that led you to break with the family maxim and putting you on the path, as my dear friend Tom Donnellan once said so aptly, to becoming, simply put, the most important unelected official in America since World War II. The Secretary is the only person to have served as Chief of Staff to two Presidents. He directed five presidential campaigns. He was Secretary of the Treasury in that other building down the street. But, as I've seen written, and as I think I know from hearing you speak, there was no job that he loved more than being Secretary of State. And he showed exceptional leadership in guiding the foreign policy of our country with a lasting impact on this country and on the world. James Baker served as Secretary of State for 43 months. I think it's safe to say that there are a few times in history when the world has changed so profoundly what you call, Jim, a whirlwind of history. Or, as you said late one night in April 1991, to a young staffer by the name of Bill Burns, sitting in a rundown hotel in the Caucasus, have you ever seen so many things changing so damn fast? During that period, the Soviet Union disintegrated without conflict. The Berlin Wall fell. The U.S. and the USSR undertook the most significant reduction ever in nuclear arms. Saddam Hussein's invasion of Kuwait was swiftly routed. The Madrid Conference made visible for the first time a horizon of Middle East peace. We were talking about this just a short while ago. It's easy looking back at hinge moments in history uh, to view these seismic shifts as somehow inevitable, particularly when the world moves from conflict and toward peace, away from autocracy, and toward democracy. But to study those 43 months is to learn that these outcomes were anything but certain. The arc of history bent the way it did because people bent it, and no one more so than Secretary Baker. Like on November 9th, 1989, when Secretary Baker was hosting a luncheon upstairs in the Ben Franklin room for President Aquino of the Philippines, he was handed a folded note informing him that the Berlin Wall was coming down. As he rushed over to the White House, he scribbled notes that read, something we've wanted for 40 years, Europe that's whole and free, reunification on the basis of Western values. Now that last part was very uncertain. Secretary Baker not only immediately saw where he wanted to end up, Democratic reunited Germany, he cleared the path to get there. He staked out the principles that Germans, not outside powers, should get to determine their own future, and that Germany should be reunited within NATO, and then methodically brought our allies and the Soviets around to these positions. President George H. W. Bush, your doubles partner on the Houston tennis courts and professional partner in so much of life summed up your leadership best. The president said he acted while others were still struggling to comprehend, and he got things done. As I've tried to look at those who've held this job uh, before me, the thing that struck me so much about you, Jim, is this ability to have a vision for where you wanted to go, and then figuring out a way to get there. It's an extraordinary and rare combination and one that inspires me every single day. How you get things done is something I try to learn from every day, and diplomats will continue to study for generations. Um, and if I can, I just want to take a moment to suggest at least three lessons that I take from reading and learning uh, 
about you. First of all, diplomacy ultimately comes down to relationships. And building the trust at the core of those relationships takes time. It takes effort. It takes empathy. Uh, as you later wrote, to persuade foreign leaders, it's often helpful to put yourself in their shoes. Now, I had some opportunity also to see that in practice when I served as John Kerry's deputy. I saw the kinds of relationships that he built, the effort that, John, you put into this, day in, day out. And it's a very, very powerful lesson. And I've been inspired by both of you in trying to follow in those footsteps. Jim, you understood that to advance our interests and values, uh, you had to get to know your counterparts beyond the negotiating table, to understand what drove them and what they were up against. Uh, and I think there's no better example, we had a chance to talk about this a little, than the friendship that you built with the then Soviet Foreign Minister, Edward Shevardnadze. In the summer of 1989, uh, you took the unprecedented step then of inviting him to your ranch in Wyoming. Uh, you met in Washington that fall. You broke protocol by flying together to Jackson Hole rather than taking separate planes. And on board, you shared a meal and talked for the hours of that flight. Over the coming days, the Secretary took Shevardnadze fishing on the Snake River. I got an account of who caught what, who didn't catch what. Uh, and, as I understand it, gave her a pair of custom black cowboy boots made in Houston. Chevy, as you took to calling him, later invited you to come fishing with him in Siberia. That relationship was at the foundation for so many of the historic steps that were taken by our two nations. And I suggest that if not for the trust, that you were able to build. Uh, the Soviet foreign minister may not have been willing to, side, uh, to stand side by side with you at the Moscow airport to jointly denounce Iraq's invasion of Kuwait. The first time the great powers spoke together on a seminal foreign policy issue, an act that was seen as a bookend to the Cold War. Second, Secretary Baker understood that while American leadership was indispensable to tackling global challenges, we need allies, we need partners to get the job done. And those relationships have to be built, they have to be nurtured. That was how Secretary Baker assembled the coalition to stand up to Saddam Hussein's invasion of Kuwait. Ahead of the November 1990 vote at the UN Security Council, authorizing the use of force against Iraq, the Secretary recognized the importance of rallying the broadest possible coalition. So, he wanted to meet with every head of state or foreign minister from every country on the Security Council, 15 of them, uh, including us, he had three weeks to do it. In that time, he traveled to 12 countries on three continents. And he didn't just show up. He practiced the five Ps that his father had taught him. Prior preparation prevents poor performance. So that's another one I'm inscribing uh, on my own desk. That preparation allowed him to meet each country where it was, bringing to bear the right combination of persuasion, charm, and maybe just a little bit of pressure, too. Ultimately, 12 Security Council members voted for the resolution. Third, while the Secretary was a master at getting things done, he never lost sight of the principles guiding his actions. He wrote, and I quote, an American political diplomat should always remember that power, divorced from the purposes valued by our democracy, will ultimately prevent. Jim, I suspect that's one of the reasons you loved being secretary. You could use that gift for getting things done to advance the values that you believed in most and that represented everything that's good about this country. Yes, we all know the secretary could whip votes and run a campaign better than anyone. I can attest to that. I worked for Michael Dukakis in 1988. <laughs> but the greatest campaign he ever waged was for a more secure, a more peaceful world. So once again, we find ourselves in a role in a history. A more assertive China is challenging the rules-based international order that has long been the foundation of security and prosperity for Americans and people around the world. The post-Cold War era has ended. Russia's invaded a neighbor reverted to almost totalitarian repression at home, it's threatening even to use nuclear weapons. As we navigate this time,
few models are more fitting to follow than the model set by Jim Baker. In the office that I now have the privilege of occupying, Secretary Baker kept a small plaque on his desk given to him by President Reagan. And it said, it can be done with the word can in capital letters. Secretary Baker is, has always been a realist, but he's never lost faith in America, in our values, and in our capacity when we're at our best to make the world a little bit better as long as we remember the purpose behind our power. Mr. Secretary, today, on behalf of this department, on behalf of our country, thank you. Thank you for showing us how it can be done. Thank you for inspiring us across the years, across generations. Thank you for being such a great leader for this country and for this department. Mr. Secretary.
but I want you all to know how much I admire him. He is a very successful entrepreneur who is interested in building a better world, not just making money. His philanthropic commitment is best evidenced, I think, by the organization Star for Life, which he and his wife, Kristen, launched in 2005 to prevent AIDS among young people in Africa. We are also honored, Kristen, to have you here today. Their foundation works to strengthen young people's self-esteem and belief in the future. So congratulations to him and Kristen. And congratulations as well, Johan Falkman, to you, a sculptor, a talented sculptor. You have a wonderful gift, Johan, and the ability to bring joy and understanding through your art. So thank you also for honoring me as one of your subjects. Now this event would not be possible without the National Museum of American Diplomacy. The history, the practice, and the challenges of American diplomacy tell the real success story, I think, of the American spirit. This museum is going to keep that story alive. Our nation has long been overdue, I think, for a museum that highlights the important role that diplomacy plays in our foreign and security policy. I've been told that there are 18 large museums dedicated to our armed forces and wars that we have fought, and perhaps as many as 400 small ones. And now I am very, very proud to be associated with this one that recognizes the importance and the success of diplomacy. And since we're talking about the importance of diplomacy, I want to recognize my late friend, whom the Secretary mentioned, and former boss, and yes, former tennis doubles partner, George H.W. Bush. I told people I had an easy job. You know, the Secretary of State can't find himself separated from his president, and there was never any chance of that with me because I had a president who was a friend, close friend, for 40 years. He was my daughter's godfather, and I carried him on the tennis court, so there was never going to be any. Not only that, I ran all of his campaigns, so he and I were never going to see any, any uh, space between us. But I want to say, nobody, in my view, nobody understood foreign policy, nor practiced it as well as President Bush. He was a star in that. He knew it, he understood it, and he knew what to do and when to do it. And were it not for George Bush, this bus to me would not be here today. I'd like to end my, my remarks today, sadly, by saying a few words about another friend and great American, one of my successors as Secretary of State the incomparable Madeline Albright. Madeline was intelligent, she was savvy, she was charming, and I can tell you, because she did some politics too, she could be brutally frank when the moment demanded it. But above all, she understood the important place that American diplomacy has in global affairs. We are going to greatly miss Madeline and her wit and candor. Most of all, I think we will miss her contribution to our nation and to the practice of diplomacy. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for supporting this museum uh, of diplomacy. Mr. Secretary, thank you again for those extraordinarily generous remarks. Don, Christian, and Johan, thank you for being here and making today such a memorable one for me. Thank you.
they will take some time to visit the temporary exhibit in the pavilion um, and to meet the museum staff and to see some of the items in our now 10,000 object uh, permanent collection. Um, we also have displayed uh, some objects uh, connected with Secretary Baker, so I hope you'll stop by. And to see the signature uh, fragment of the Berlin Wall, which Secretary Baker has signed. And with that, thank you for attending and thank you for your support for the National Museum.